Hello and welcome. This is going to be the final Halloween SFX makeup class today. Don't worry though, I'm going to save all the videos. Anyone that has signed up through Eventbrite, I'm going to email a link to all three videos, so Monday's class, yesterday's class and today's class. Uh, today you're going to need some um, cotton wool, toothpicks, PVA glue, Pritt stick, Fake blood, if you don't have fake blood, don't worry about it. We can use food coloring and oil mixed together. Um, I have some face paints. If you don't have face paints, normal makeup will do. So eyeshadows and eyeliners. Um, and if you don't have anything and you just want to watch along, that's absolutely no problem at all. So today we're going to do a broken hand with some bones sticking out. And the bones are going to be these little Q-tips wrapped in cotton wool. And if you don't have cotton wool, we can use tissue paper. We're going to use some tissue paper. So this is just normal toilet roll and it's three ply. So what I go to do is just pull it apart really gently to make it nice and thin. So I'll just show you now how I do. Just pull the sections apart to get nice thin sheets. And that's what's going to look like our skin. So I'm going to switch over now to the camera so you'll see me working away on uh, my daughter's hands. Lauren is back being my model today. She's been my model all week. I also have a competition. So if you tag me in your photographs on either Instagram or Facebook, I have ordered some sweet boxes from mymarvelousgifts.ie, especially for the kids. And then the top prize will be access to my online course, Salon Styled at Home. And then the second two winners will get access to my ebook, Salon Styled at Home, the step-by-step uh, -step guide. So great, I'm looking forward to today. And um, questions, just pop them in the chats. Hi Fiona, nice to see you here. I'm gonna swap over now to the other camera. If there's any lighting issues or anything like that, just let me know get you over so this is Lauren's uh, little handy here and what I'm going to start by doing is getting some PVA glue so this is just the PVA glue I'm going to put it into a little dish like this and I'm just going to start layering it up yeah. so just a little uh, tip for anyone that is really really sensitive if you do a little patch test if you're putting it on your kids and they're really really sensitive do a patch test in an area that's close to the area that you're going to work on so for instance i'm going to be putting the pva glue here on lauren if i tested her here and left it on her skin for five or ten minutes and there was any redness or irritation i wouldn't use the product on her skin it just means that she's a little bit sensitive the same with the prit stick and the food coloring so there they they can cause sensitivity in some kids and um, lauren fortunately enough isn't uh, i've literally put everything on her this week so let's see i hope you can all see okay Just... Okay, so I see a few of you have already popped in. I'm just moving this camera around to get more notice. So I'm going to do uh, a broken hand where the bones are sticking out. So I want to put all the um, PVA glue in and around the area where she has already got bones and tendons. So what I'm going to do is thin layer of PVA glue all around the area where her her own bones are and this is going to be my adhesive so anything I put on now is going to stick and I just layer it up nice and thin so again you don't need to if I always go less is more and I'm coming down towards the knuckles because that's where all her bones and tendons are so just a nice thin layer of the PVA and next I'm going to use a nice thin layer of tissue paper so I just have one square here and just pat it into the skin anything extra you can just pull away but you can see now it's showing me this is a bone another bone another bone another bone so that's the area that I'm going to work on today and all this area out here I can pull away so using my brush I'm just going to ease away any excess tissue that I don't need and pull it away. Okay. 
Now, this is just a normal makeup brush. It's nothing special. Everything that I've been using over the last uh, few days, the dishes, I've literally put in the dishwasher and all of the PVA and the uh, food colouring and fake blood and all has washed away. So I have put down a dark towel here on the area that I'm working just to protect it from any spills or fallout. So you see, I'm not being too particular here. It's just a thin layer of tissue and a thin layer of PVA glue. I'm going to go in with another thin layer of PVA glue now all around the edges. And the tissue is what's going to look like skin. I'm after getting some really brilliant photographs from mummies showing me their kids hard at work, recreating the looks. And that's what this is all about. A little bit of fun for the kids, keep them entertained, help the mummies out if they want to go and have a cup of coffee while the kids practice and play, off you go. So just a nice thin layer of PVA glue. And now what I'm going to go in with is the Pritt stick. Okay, so this is instead of modeling wax. So if, uh, if I was a SFX makeup artist, which I actually am, uh, I would be using modeling wax. But the Pritt stick is just as effective and just as easy to use. So I'm literally just rolling up the top of it and I'm going to scrape that bit off and start to mold it into the shape that I want. So just, I have this much here going into my little dish. And then I'm just gonna cut off a small amount like this. And I'm gonna roll it like a sausage. So just rolling it up. Like it's a sausage. And what this is going to do is give me an area to stick the bones into and sit them in place. So I'm literally just going to sit it on her skin here. And I'm going to put another one down this end. Stick it in place. And then I'm going to work it in using. Um, either the brush or a q-tip so i'll use a q-tip and i'll start on the outer corners and just work it down into the skin to stick it in place so just sticking it into place i'm actually going to get a a toothpick it's a little bit easier to use a little bit more um precise Push down the sides. Okay, just push it down. I'm going to make a little indentation in the center. That's where I'm going to stick the bone into place. Just work it into the skin. And then as the PVA glue starts to set, it's going to hold that pit stick in place. You just want to make sure that you're sticking down the sides. It's a little bit tedious, but it's well worth the finished look. Just working it in with the stick, breaking it down a little bit. I'm just pinning it out a little bit. So that it looks more realistic. We don't want it sticking up too much. If it is too thick and it sticks up too much, it will end up falling off the hand because the hand moves so much. We want to pin it down a little bit so that we can stick it into place. And I'm going to add more PVA glue over it, so don't worry. It will be fairly sturdy. So anywhere there's bones, I'm going to put some print stick to get up here. Working it down, press down really hard because it is quite tough. Just press it down and drag it off to the side with your stick. And it's really actually this is quite pliable. It's just really sticky. 
So if it gets on your hands, I think you might need to just wipe it off with a wet towel. It's really, really effective. So all around the corners is where I'm going to put it so I can stick my bones into the kitchen. I'm going to put another bit here and here. So again, you can see I'm not being really precise. It can be, it's quite messy, that's fine. The aim of the game is to just get it sticking to the skin so it doesn't fall off. Pushing it down. Yeah, I'm just going to mess around with them to see if they're lifting easily enough. If they're lifting too easy, I'm just going to push them down even more. That one's a little bit lifty. I'm just starting at the outer corners and pushing it down into place to stop it from falling off. And the PVA glue underneath, as soon as that starts to set, it's going to give it more adhesion as well, so it's going to stick better. Yeah, so just poking it around there with the stick just to make sure that it's in place properly. And you can see if I just move her hand there, she's still able to move her hand. It's not uncomfortable, but it's not falling off her hand either. So that's really good. So again, a Q-tip like this. I'm going to paint it with some PVA glue. So just painting down the stick of it. And then I'm going to wrap it in a tiny bit of cotton wool just to make it look like blood and guts when I start to paint it up. Again, if you don't have cotton wool, you can use tissue paper. And I'm going to measure them up. If they're too long, I can just cut off the bits that are too long. So Lauren's hand here, the bone about that then so I'll take off this much and then just place it into the area that I wanted to go and you can see the cotton wool is starting to stick up and that's what we like because when we start to paint that with the fake blood it's going to look like guts and blood and bits sticking out so this little bit that I've cut off I'm going to stick him in there and I'm going to do another one exactly the same. So my PVA glue all over the stick. Wrap in a little bit of cotton wool. So just stick the cotton wool on and then just drag it down the body of the Q-tip. Measure it up. So that one I'll probably just take off the tip. So I'm finding it a little bit difficult to cut that stick. So uh, kids, you might need a little bit of help from a parent. Or you might be strong enough. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm a weakling. And then this little bit, I'm going to put some more PVA glue onto. And this has the cotton on the top, so I'll just leave it as is and just stick it down into place. And it doesn't matter that this is broken in two because it actually is more effective. So now I have them in place, I'm going to go over with more PVA glue. And the, this PVA glue is just going to give it more stick. I'm going to go all over the Pritt stick as well, especially around the outer corners. So starting on the outside of the Pritt stick and just brushing it down into the skin. And just brush it down. So 
all around the outside corners first and then through at the center of the Again, just pushing it down. And even as I'm pushing it, I can see it going and sticking onto the skin a little bit better. So it's heating up there with the heat from Lauren's skin. So it's getting more pliable, so easier to move around. Again, just pushing it down into the skin. I'm gonna stick it down in place. And now onto my bones onto the bone and all over that cotton wool. And if you see like here that the bone is sit sitting up a bit, just put an extra bit of PVA glue and push down to hold it in place a little bit better. So I hope you're all enjoying this. I'm actually having great fun. It's probably the most time me and Lauren have spent together in a long time. Normally she's running out the door to get away from me. But she's not allowed anymore. So as a payback, I had to do her nails yesterday. And anyone that knows me knows I hate doing nails. But she sat there like a patient. Great little daughter that she is getting them done. Okay, so that's the next layer of PVA glue on. I'm going to add on some more tissue paper. So this is gonna act like skin. So what I want to do with this is come around the outer corners and make it look like the skin is really falling off. So with this, I'm going to roll it up. and place it down. And then go back over that with some PVA glue. So I want this to look like it's the skin hanging off. So I don't mind it being a little bit thicker than the other layers. And again, I don't want to be too precise because this is going to literally come up and come around. Just paint it into position. And again, I'm just tucking this corner around and sticking it down onto the print stick and adding some more PVA glue. So because this is a little bit thicker, this area, it's gonna take a little bit longer to dry, but that's okay, because we'd be painting away on the inside as well while it's drying. So you can see I'm leaving this bit up here because this is going to look like my skin. Now I'm going to do another layer of PVA around here because I'm going to add some more tissue paper around here, a nice thick section as well. So using one sheet of tissue paper and then just folding it up. And now stick it into place. And using the PVA glue on the brush, brushing it into place. So again, just remember to tighten all your lids in between use, especially with the glue, because if you don't close the lid, it will go hard and then it will be impossible for you to get more glue out. The same with the blood and the... Um, the food colouring, make sure you put the lids back on because if it spills, if you knock it over, accidentally knock it over, it's going to be really hard to get out. So just be careful. So again, I'm going back in with more PVA glue on my brush and just starting at the outer corners and brushing the paper into place. So again, I know it doesn't look like much at the moment, but when all the blood and guts go onto it, it's going to look extremely gory. I've done this in the skills that I teach in and people have actually felt physically sick 
at the end gotten weak from just looking at it when it's completed. So I'm just gonna put one little tiny bit of tissue here. With this bit of tissue, I'm going to pull it away in half. And I'm just going to place it here. Push it into place and then add some more PVA glue. If you have liquid latex, that's what we would use instead of the PVA glue. So I know some of the SFX Halloween makeup kits have liquid latex in them. And uh, that's what I, I'm using the PVA glue because it was, I wanted to make it more accessible to people that hadn't gotten out to the shops in time and weren't prepared. But if you have got liquid latex, this is what you would, this is where you would use it instead of PVA glue. And the Pritt stick is instead of the modeling wax. So if you went and bought the zombie kits or anything like that, they would have the modeling wax. And I use Pritt stick instead of modeling wax. Bones are made from Q-tips wrapped in uh, cotton wool. I had brushed them initially with some PVA glue first as well. So that's going to dry away for a couple of seconds. And while it's drying away, I'm going to start mixing up my blood and guts. So for my blood and guts, what I need is a little dish. If you have fake blood, brilliant. If you don't, you can use some red food colouring. So I'm going to use some red food colouring uh, mixed with some oil to show you how to make the blood and guts. So will you just move your hand out there for a second? Right there. So I have red food colouring, a little dish and some oil and some cotton wool. If you don't have cotton wool, tissue will do. Sorry, I know that's a bit bright. So in my dish, I'm going to put in some uh, food coloring. Now bear in mind, this food coloring that I have is about 10 years old. So it's really uh, old. Get it out with the brush. So in here, I'm going to have food coloring, red food coloring, a capsule of olive oil. You don't need to use olive oil. You can use rapeseed oil, sunflower oil, any kind of cooking oil. It's no problem at all. Coconut oil. So literally just a capful of oil. Pour it in. and just mix it around. So this is instead of fake blood. So you can see it's nice and runny. Now I want to make it look like it's guts. So to make it look like it's guts, I'm gonna add in some cotton wool. I'll add in some tissue paper as well so you can see what way it looks. So if, I, if I've only got tissue paper, I literally just pull it into sections and drop it in place stick into my fingers because I've got pretty stick all over my fingers. But if I just add in the tissue paper and then mix it around. It's starting to come together nicely. So you can see it's just one big lump of guts. What you do when you want to separate it, just get two little toothpicks together and just pull it up and separate it out. So that's going to look like flayed, burnt, rotten skin. And then if I use some cotton wool, so literally just add in some cotton wool. If you don't have cotton wool, um, the, the cotton off the Q-tips would work. Or if you have the cotton pads that you um, use on your face for taking off the makeup, if you pull them apart, they are all cotton wool on the inside. So literally just mixing it into the food coloring and the oil. Now I think 
I need a bit more food coloring. So I want it to be really, really dark. If I want it runnier, I'll just add in a little bit extra oil. And adding the oil into it as well just gives it another di dimension. It makes it look darker, it makes it look runnier, and just more gory. Just using the brush to really get in and cover all of the cotton wool and the tissue with the oil and the food colour. Now, when I start to pick them up and separate them, it comes out into really disgusting guts and gore. That's what we want. If you have fake blood, you would just use fake blood instead of the food colouring and oil. Um, the other thing I also do is use uh, coffee granules, but I'll show you how to do that after a few minutes. So if you just put your hand back down there for me, sweetheart. So while I've been busy mixing up this tissue is starting to dry out for me, so that's great. It means I can get in now and start filling up with the guts and gore. So using my little toothpicks, I'm just picking up some pieces of the cotton wool and tissue, placing it in between the bones. And an easy way to move it around is get your toothpick on one end and another toothpick on the other and then just pulling it gently. So holding down with one end and pulling gently on the other end. And because the PVA glue is not fully dry yet, it's allowing the, uh, the cotton wool to stick and then as the PVA glue dries and sets, it's going to hold it in place even better for you. So just putting in some more guts. And save some of this gut for our blood, uh, for our bullet wound as well. So just hold down on one end and then just pull gently with the other end. Where are you all from? I seen somebody there from Brazil. I was like, wow, brilliant. And I've got a lot from Dublin and some from England. I think my sister's on from Australia. So welcome, I'm delighted to have you all here. Just adding some more in. Okay, so that, that's as much of the guts and gore I'm going to use for the moment. Let's see if I need to add any more once I've done my painting. Okay, so now next I have a little bit bottle of foundation and I'm going to come around the outside of the tissue with that just to make it look a little bit more like skin so to do that I'm going to squirt a tiny dab onto a tissue and literally just pushing it in to the tissue all around the side just so that I can blend it in with the skin a little bit more realistically. But again, if you don't have foundation, that's absolutely fine. I'm just being a bit of a perfectionist. When we put on the, the blood and the face paint, you're not going to know the difference. So just using the sponge to push it into place. And this is just a cheap latex sponge. I'm just using the square end of it um, because the square end will get more of an area cover for me quicker. So just dab, dab, dab into place. Oops. 
sorry. Okay. okay, I hope you can see a little bit better there. I just moved the uh, camera a bit. So now I'm going to go in with uh, just a makeup brush and it has some black eyeshadow on it. And what I want to do is just darken the center of the cut on the sides of the uh, bones. And what it does is it just makes that look deeper. So it makes the holes look deeper. So just down the sides of the bones, adding some, it's just some black eyeshadow. If you want, it can be black face paint or eyeliner. Just coming down the sides of the bones and then in around that prick stick there. Just push it into place. And the reason I'm pushing it in is because I don't want to lift the prick stick out of position. So just pushing, dabbing it into place will help that work easier. So just a tiny little bit more. Just pushing it in. In around the inside of that tissue because what that will do is just make the tissue look like it's lifting more as well and then just in the inside of this tissue here and around that prick stick Okay, so now if you have red face paint, we're going to go in with red face paint. If you don't have red face paint and you have red lipstick, just take off a little bit of the red lipstick onto your brush. And everywhere you put the black, you're going to put the red. So just pushing it into place. And again, like everything with makeup, it's just a trick of the imagination and a trick of the light. Going in around where the print stick is, coming up the inside of that tissue, around where the guts are. Try and not get it on the bones because we want the bones to look white. Just pushing it into place. I have a little bit of a yellow on, it's just a little face paint. And I'm going to go in again, anywhere where I did the black and the red. I'm just drawing it in and then I'm gonna mess it around with the brush. Because again, I don't want to be too clean. I want it to be messy. So just pushing it into place. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the coffee granules and some fake blood. So if you don't have fake blood, just go a little bit more of your food colouring and uh, the oil. So in here, I'm just going to put in some coffee granules. So just, this is the Kenko. This is the dare stuff. You're getting me dare coffee today, girls. Um adding in some fake blood it's just moving on for a second so i literally just pour it in like that i'm going to add in some cotton wool just a tiny amount not too much i'm going to mix it all up Okay, make sure you put the lids back on and then just mix it all around together. And what happens is when the coffee granules get wet, they go darker, but they still stay grainy. So it looks like the blood is clotted. And then adding in the, uh, the cotton wool does the same thing. It just makes it look like clotted blood. So just using my 
sticks now to pull it apart. And you can see when I lift it up now, it's going to look like it's just got little lumps all over. So that's going back into the cut. So just down the side of the bones, holding it in place and then pulling it apart with the other end of the stick. So making sure to leave the bones looking white. But you can see now even the, the coffee granules have just given it another bit of darkness so it looks more realistic. And the cotton wool just goes long and stringy. So it looks like fibrous tendons being exposed. So just filling in those gaps between the bones. Now, I'm just going to move our hands so you can see how secure this is. So just bend your hand for me. So see, it's not moving. Lift, turn your hand over and back around again. So it's staying in place. So that's what the PVA glue is doing. It's, it's sticking it into place. So anything that, if you find that it's lifting anywhere and you want it to stop lifting, just add a little bit more PVA glue and then it'll hold it in place for you. Now I'm just going to get my tissue, or sorry, my uh, sponge with this sponge. I'm going to get, dip it into the fake blood and coffee mixture. So just make your hand for a second. I'm just going to dip it in like this and then go all over the, uh, the cut. Put your hand back. So anywhere where there's white uh, tissue, we're just going to press it into place and cover that white tissue with the red blood and coffee mixture. So just cushion it into place. And anywhere, if you've used the foundation, you can come down over the foundation as well, just to make it look a little bit more realistic. So we just, is covered. You can leave the bones white because we want them to look like bones but we want all of the tissue that's white to be red. Any of the print stick, we want that to be red as well. And you can go even up onto the skin here, just so that it looks really realistic. So just pushing it into place. To remove this, all you need to do is put oil all over and wipe it away with a cloth. So yesterday what I did is I poured oil onto a tissue, lay it on the, the wound for a couple of minutes and then just wiped it away with tissue. And I was trying to get a photograph of Lauren's face where she went and removed it before I could even get a photograph. I'm, gonna, I'm not removing today because I want to get some photographs just to put up on Instagram. But if you go back and look at yesterday's ones, you'll see how I removed it, and the day before, you'll see how I removed it properly. So move your hand there. Not into the... Okay. So if you want to lift up this skin now, just get a little toothpick, lift it. So it looks like it's fallen off. So this is the tissue paper that we put all around the outer corner. And I'm just using it the toothpick to just lift it up gently. I don't want to pull it off altogether. I just want to lift it so it looks like it's flayed skin. And then using my brush, I'm just going to paint whatever's on the brush. I'm just going to paint any white bits of tissue with the brush. So inside here, here, around the outside. 
it here. That is the broken hand with the blood and guts. What do you think of that, guys? Do you like it? I hope you like it. I think it's deadly. I think it's very realistic, even in, in real life, like looking at it here is quite realistic. So now I'm going to get her to turn her hand over and I'm going to do a bullet wound. So just turning her hand over, the bullet wound is going to go into the center of her hand. So this can go anywhere. It can go to the side of your head. It can go in your face, anywhere. I need to be able to put this stuff on your hand. So in order to do the bullet wound, I need some PVA glue as my adhesive. So literally just doing it in the center here. Nice good dollop of it because again, where it's going on the hand, um, it moves quite regularly. So I want it to stick and not go anywhere. So I have my Pritt stick. I'm just going to have a big lump of Pritt stick and put it in the middle. And now I'm going to work that into position. So just getting another. Oh, thanks, Genevieve. So just getting another uh, toothpick and working it around the outer corners first into position. And because it's a bullet hold, I want it to be more circular. So I want it to look roundy. So working around the outer corners first, pushing into position. Once I have it in position and I feel like it's nice and secure, I'm going to get my makeup brush and just using the end of the makeup brush, I'm going to push it down and make a circle. Just hold it into position if it's moving around and just make a circle and remove it. So now it has like a little hole through the center. So using my makeup brush, the actual brush part, I'm just going to widen out the hole. There's still some uh, blood and guts on that brush, so that's fine. And I'm just pushing down through the center of the hole. And now I'm going to start working around the sides to stick them down. Stick them down, leaving the hole. So you want the hole to look circular all the time. So just this outside section, working that down into the skin so that it sticks in place. And again, just holding with one stick and moving around with the other. So that just allows you to work down the sides into place. And then as that PVA glue starts to set, it's going to hold it in place as well. So again, this is a brilliant one for like the, the side of the forehead, like the temple as well. Not that I condone any kind of violence or violent uh, videos, but if you see anybody getting shot, they normally get shot in the head not in the hand. Although I seen thing on Gogglebox last night where they shot him in the hand and he lost his fingers. That was a bit gruesome as well. They live to be on that. So. so again, just working it down. Trying to leave your hole in place. Now I'm going to add some more PVA glue just to try and hold it in place. So just get a Q-tip with some PVA glue on it. I'm working it all around the outside of the Pritt stick and just gently brushing it down into the skin. If you find, oh, thanks, Linda. If you find that it's moving a little bit too much, you can add some tissue paper as well. That'll just give it more 
something to grip onto, like especially on this part of your hand, because it, it is a uh, it's harder because it moves so much. Oops, I'm just working around the outer corner. And anywhere where it looks like it's lifting, I'm just adding extra PVA glue. And again, even though that's still wet, I'm going to continue on and start painting out the center section. So again, dark makes it look like it's deeper. So I'm going to use a little bit of black um, eyeshadow or face paint or eyeliner, whatever you have. I'm literally on my makeup brush, just pushing it down into the center of that hole. So just pushing it down. I'm working around the side. And it just makes it appear like it's a deeper hole. So just a little bit more. And I'm actually moving my uh, brush in circles. So by moving it in circles, it's just making that hole a little bit deeper for me. And it means I'm getting up the sides as well. So you can see there, it's starting to look deeper and deeper. So now the blood and guts that I have left from the hands, I'm going to start filling that hole with them. So just a tiny a bit at a time and just pushing it down into the center of the hole. So again, less is more, a little bit at a time and you can just keep pushing it in and packing it up. Pushing it in and packing it up. Okay, so that's my hole filled. Now I'm going to start painting around the outside. So again, I'm going to get my um, sponge with my blood and guts on the outside of the sponge and just start dabbing around the outside of the Pritt stick. So when I do that, then the Pritt stick goes from being white to red and orange and it's just starting to look a little bit more realistic. So again, you don't have to be too perfect because if you did get shot, I'm sure the blood and guts would be everywhere. I'm more interested in making sure that that print stick doesn't fall off once you've got it done. So that's why I just spend a little bit extra time working down the sides of it and working it into place. So now with the blood, I'm just going everywhere that there is any print stick and all around it. I'm going to add some fake blood now just on the sponge. And just easily pushing it into place. And because I'm putting it on on the sponge, it's not gonna run everywhere. Whereas if I just poured it into place, it would run everywhere. But I don't want it to do that. I just want it to look like blood. So I'm just dragging it down to the outside hand of the hand. And now we're going to add in some uh, coffee granules. So the co coffee granules, when they mix with the blood, are going to look darker and more like guts as well. So I have just a little Q-tip with a tiny bit of... Uh, PVA glue on, so it grabs onto the coffee granules, and then literally just gonna run it over the hole where the fake blood is, and it'll grip onto those coffee granules. Add a little bit more fake blood. So again, just on the Q-tip, the same Q-tip with the coffee granules on and then just pushing it into place. So the hole is the part that has the darkest area. Just push, push, push it in. Now open up your hand for me and then close it down and open it again and turn it over. 
and turn it back around. So you can see it didn't fall off, it stayed in place. So I'm gonna show you how to remove it carefully on the on the bullet wound. The other one I'm gonna leave there because I want to get photographs off because it's so impressive. But um, again, for your kids, if they are sensitive and if they are um, allergic to anything, I would use coconut oil or almond oil or uh, olive oil or something like that because um, th that's, uh, like coconut oil is antibacterial and stuff like that. So it's not, and it's anti-inflammatory, so it's not going to harm their skin. Um, I have olive oil here. And have oil. So I'm going to use some coconut oil to remove this. Uh, I use coconut oil as an all-over body moisturizer as well, and for my face, it's really brilliant. Especially if you're suffering with mask knee at the moment, I'd use it as a, a face mask going to bed. So literally, I have a jar. Just move around for a second. I have a jar of coconut oil. Got a little. I think it was three euros. That comes into the shower. With me. I've taken it off. A good bit into my hand like this and what I'm, with the heat of my hand it's going to uh, melt down that gives your hand back. and what I'm going to do is just put it on top and work it in and then I'm just going to get tissue and wipe it away so just kitchen roll or a cloth to keep even better. If you have a face cloth, it would be better. So just some kitchen roll and just wipe it away. If you find that the food coloring is staining, just put some more oil on and work it into the skin. So I'll just add some more oil on in this. So just rubbing the oil, this coconut oil, into it anywhere where it's staining. And now I'm going to get a wet cloth and wipe it away with a wet cloth. and just wipe it away so there is a tiny little bit of stain from the food coloring but it's not bad and the um the cloth is a great way because it'll exfoliate as well at the same time so i'm just going to switch back to me so I hope you really enjoyed it. I am going to record the video, put it back up on Facebook now. It's going to be accessible for the next week or two for anybody to look back on. Monday's class is there, Wednesday's class is there. Anybody that signed up through Eventbrite, I'm going to be emailing you links to an unlisted page on um, YouTube where you'll have uh, access to the videos forevermore. I'll be announcing the winners to the competition tomorrow. So don't forget to tag me in your photographs. If you don't want uh, to put your kids on Facebook and Instagram, you can just DM me. It, you, I've ordered uh, some sweets and goodies for the kids. So if I pick you as a winner, I'm going to DM you for your address and I'll post you out the sweets and goodies for the kids. The overall winner will win access to my course, Salon Style at Home. And the second and third winners will get a copy of my ebook, which is step by side step-by-step -step guide on how to get salon styled at home. So it's everything to do with styling your own hair, doing your own makeup and looking after your own skincare. I really, really appreciate you coming and spending this time with me and I really enjoyed it. I got to spend some great time with my kids. So thanks so much and keep following me. Every week I put up a new video. It might be something to do with makeup. It might be something to do with skincare. Next four weeks, I'm going to be on uh, the Mummy Hub doing tips and tricks on how to look after your own skincare, your own hair, your own makeup, five minute tips on how to get out the door to school. Uh, there's also going to be some styling by Well Styled by Sarah, some chair yoga. So go over and follow the Mummy Hub and Nurture Health as well. So I'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Bye.